Hi, I'm Rob. I'm going to take you along on our trip to Varadero, Cuba, so you can see what it's like to go to Cuba, travel there, stay at a hotel, see some sights, just generally get an idea of what it's like in Cuba. Today we're flying out of Miami International Airport on American Airlines. Flying to Cuba is fairly standard flying, just like any other flight. Get to the airport early is my first piece of advice to you. At least three hours early for flights to Cuba. That's my mom, Marianne, and my wife, Morellis. When you go to Cuba, as an American, you have to purchase a special Cuban visa. It costs anywhere between $75 and $100. This visa is required to enter Cuba. If you by chance don't have it, they will force you to buy it in Cuba and there'll be a penalty. Now let's talk about luggage. Going to Cuba is very similar to flying on a domestic flight. If the airline charges a bag fee, they're gonna charge a bag fee. Depending on the airline, there could be some Cuba specific quantity and weight restrictions on your luggage that you should be aware of before your flight. Another note about luggage going to Cuba. A lot of people opt to wrap their bags at the airport in Miami. What I mean is there's a guy that'll charge you extra money to put cellophane wrap around your bag. This is because the Cuban authorities have a history of being rather rough and intrusive with luggage. And if the bag is wrapped, there's less chance they're going to open it up. Your bag, when arriving in Cuba, will be x-rayed. And if there's something in it they don't like, they will open it. You need to know that there are certain things you absolutely cannot bring to Cuba. Communications equipment like transmitters, receiving equipment like satellite dishes, drones. Just keep in mind you're entering a communist country. It's a great place to vacation, but you should be mindful of all the rules and know these rules before you enter the country. As we land, the flight only took about 45 minutes, just enough time for the drink service to go through the plane one time. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of the Vardera Airport as we go up the jetway just so you can kind of get an idea of what you can expect when you go there. When you arrive in Cuba, you'll have to change your dollars to the local currency. There are actually two currencies in Cuba, the Cuban peso and the convertible peso. Tourists use the convertible peso. People who live in Cuba use the regular peso. The regular peso is severely devalued. It's pretty worthless. The convertible peso is pegged to the US dollar, so one peso equals one dollar. However, when you exchange it, there's going to be fees that the government charges, so it's never equal. So here we are leaving the airport, headed for our hotel. We stayed at the Blau Varadero. This is an all-inclusive hotel right on the beach. So now let's talk about the rooms in this hotel. Hotel rooms in Cuba are very similar to hotel rooms in the United States. Our room had a modern bathroom. It had a safe. It had television. And of course it has really good air conditioning. The electricity is 220 volts in Cuba. Bring your converters. Now let's talk about the beach that's connected to the back of the hotel. There's volleyball. There's water activities that are inclusive. There are thatched roof umbrellas with chase loungers that are part of the inclusivity. There's a buffet that's inclusive within walking distance of your chairs. The hotel also has a really spectacular pool 
which I kind of feel like is their centerpiece. They also offer these day beds that you can rent for a small fee. And of course all the vacation staples like tennis and ping pong. But for me, the best part of the Blau Varadero was this open air atrium bar that served all inclusive drinks. Here we are, headed to the center of town of Varadero on a walk-on, walk-off bus. These buses are commonplace in Varadero and are fairly inexpensive. Did you know that Al Capone had a house in Cuba? It's pretty beautiful. It's right on the beach and you can visit it for free. We just happened to beat Al Capone's when this young lady was getting married, so I took her picture. Al Capone's house has a little bar and they serve a little bit of food. Everything's reasonably priced. One thing you have to do when you go to Cuba is ride a Coco taxi. These are like little taxis on mopeds and it's quite an experience. In my opinion, Cuba has some of the world's best beaches white powdery sand in many places and clear water. That's my buddy Ugo, my wife's sister's husband, dancing with my wife before dinner. There are many things to do in Cuba besides going to the beach. One of the things you can do is go swim in a cave. Oh. And that's what we did. Somebody jumped in. Sorry about the low quality images. I had a little trouble with my new camera and the low light. Here we are driving from Varadero to Havana. This gives you an idea. You're going to see these little towns that are rustic, old, Spanish, and a little rundown. This is the town of Matanzas. This house coming up is actually the house my wife grew up in. The drive is scenic all the way along the coast to Havana. Here we are in a little town called Mirador de Bello Monte. This is the view from the lookout restaurant in the city where we stopped and had a beer. As our trip winds to an end, here we are entering the city of Havana. You'll be amazed at all the classic cars you'll see in Havana and all of the beautiful old buildings. Thanks so much for watching my video. If you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.